This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley quality Christian programming for more than 40 years. Hello and thanks for joining us for Good News in the Valley, your local Christian news magazine. Now we hope this program will be a blessing to you during this Christmas season as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, our wonderful Savior. Our featured Christmas story is Camp Hope, a low barrier daytime warming station and overnight shelter for the homeless in Yakima County. Then we'll meet the new Development Director of Life Choices Yakima to learn more about the daily operations and their needs as well as the upcoming Baby Bottle Campaign. And finally, we'll close with some of the Christmas celebrations and candlelight services being offered at various churches throughout the valley. Mike Kay, Executive Director of Camp Hope, along with his daughter Carlin, will give us an update on the facility as well as their needs for the homeless during the Christmas season and winter months ahead. Let's join Mike and Carlin for that inside look at Camp Hope. Well, I am very excited today because I get to co-host with my daughter, Carlin, who's six years old. And so Carlin, thank you for being here today. Thank you very much, Daddy. You're welcome. Um, Carlin, you actually work at Camp Hope, right? Uh, yes. Yes, and we actually gave you the title of Director of Fun. Mm-hmm. That's right. So. Carlin, we know what Camp Hope is because we've been down there, but can you explain to the people watching at home that Camp Hope's a lot more than just a, a homeless shelter, right? So can you explain to them what we do? We help out people and we give them and, and like nice hot meals. Okay. What else do we give them? We also give them presents on Christmas time. Right, for Christmas time. But we also... Can provide them with showers, mm -hmm. laundry, a bed to sleep in, clothes. They get to bring their pets, which I know you like that part, right? Mm -hmm. And we help take care of the dogs, mm -hmm. right? Do you remember about how many people are staying at Camp Hope? 230. That's a lot of people, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're only built for 250 people, so we're gonna get close to the, the maximum that we can have there, right? Mm -hmm. So you spent a lot of time at Camp Hope, right? Mm-hmm. Have you been into Jesse's Place, our young adult shelter? Mm-hmm. In fact, you helped decorate it, didn't you? Mm-hmm. So can you explain how Jesse's Place is decorated? What's inside there? Um, a TV, a DVD player, and video games, and beds. Right. And they have their own dressers? Oh, yeah. And then when a young person comes in, they get to pick their own bedding, don't they? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now let's go talk about the family shelter. Mm -hmm. So that that's the Childress Center, named after former Commissioner Norm Childress, which was a friend of mm -hmm. people that were experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. So you've been inside the family shelter, right? Yep. So what's inside that family shelter? Um, bunk beds in case there's two kids, and right. a mommy and daddy bed, and a refrigerator, and a microwave. Right. And then there's TVs, uh -huh. right, and DVD players so mm -hmm. the kids have something to do and watch, mm -hmm. right? So when we're in that family shelter, we've had kids all the way from one month old mm -hmm. all the way up to 18-year-olds. With Some stay with grandma and grandpa, yeah. some stay with mom and dads. But you like it when the babies come in, don't you? Yeah, they're cute. They're cute, yeah. So we also have some other really cool stuff there. So... We're not just a shelter, we also do outreach, right? Mm -hmm. Have you gone out and done outreach? Uh-huh. Yep. You've gone out when it's snowing mm -hmm. and when it's dark? Mm -hmm. And when we do outreach, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the people that are maybe scared mm -hmm. or um, they don't want to come into a shelter mm -hmm. and stuff like that um, because of some traumas and stuff. What do we usually give people that are out there when we're doing outreach? Uh, we give them, uh, like, nice meals. Right. We bring them soup and, and cocoa and coffee and sandwiches, right? And ham. 
Yep, and ham. That's true. We brought him ham. Do we bring him socks? Uh huh. And presents. The little presents. Yep, the little present bags, right? So they usually have like socks and shoes. stocking hats and all oh, that. Oh, and don't forget shoes. Shoes. Yep, true shoes, and gloves. Mm -hmm. Right. But I know one thing we did last year that you were really happy about was we did the dognity bags, right? Uh -huh. For our friends that were out there on the street that have dogs. Yeah. Right? And so that was a backpack that we kind of filled with some things. Mm -hmm. And you helped figure out what needed to go in that, that backpack. Can you tell people what was in the backpack? Well, collars, leashes, blankets, sweaters, and um, food. Right. But not just any blanket, right? These were blankets that you and some other people made from hand, right? So they were uh -huh. fleece blankets. And then they mat they had matching sweaters that went with the dogs, right? Uh -huh. Right? And we handed out a lot of those. Uh -huh. Like a lot. Right. A lot of, of dogs got sweaters and blankets and leashes. Right. Uh -huh. So how did it make the people feel that when you gave them the backpack for their dog? Like really happy. Really happy? Were they pretty excited? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Mm hmm We should probably do that again this year, don't you think? Uh-huh. Okay. What are some of the most fun things that we do um, when we do outreach? Well, I like it when we, like, go out in the snow because then I get to, like, wear my, like, mittens. And it's really important for some of our friends because we found people that were just sleeping under like a plastic tarp, but there was snow on top of them and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you feel when we get somebody to come into the shelter with us? Does that make you happy? Mm -hmm. Are they usually pretty happy too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some things that we did last year? Like we added some staff. Do you remember who we added? Um, Zach, Darlene, and Susie. Right, and those are our case managers. Mm -hmm. And our case managers, like Zach, he primarily focuses on outreach. Mm -hmm. So he's out there quite a bit, but he also works with the young men in the young, young adults pod, mm -hmm. or Jesse's place. And then we have Darlene, right, who's your buddy. Mm -hmm. And she focuses on families. And then she also works doing outreach as well in the, in the South Valley area. And then we have Susie, who just works with kind of everybody, right? Yeah, and she likes to talk with them. Yeah, she likes to talk with them. But their job is to connect people to other services, right? Help mm -hmm. them find their IDs or housing, or sometimes we connect them back with families and stuff like that, don't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes we get to, we get to celebrate when they, people get to go to their own apartment or they found their family and we get to reconnect them with family. That's always fun. Mm -hmm. We also expanded our outreach, right? Mm -hmm. And you got to go with us quite a bit because mm -hmm. over the last two years, we've been doing outreach to the emergency room here in town, mm -hmm. right? So you've got to go when we've had to pick people up and take them to detox beds mm -hmm. or uh, mental health stability beds. Mm -hmm. uh, where else do we usually take them? Um, like our camp, or maybe like Toppenish, our Toppenish shelter. Yep, or maybe sometimes the Union Gospel Mission, mm -hmm. right? And are they always really happy that they were able to get a ride? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's kind of fun to see them when they're happy like that, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, Carlin, did you know that over the last two years that we've done over 6,000 transports from the emergency room to other shelters. What? Detox beds or stability beds. 6,000. Isn't that a lot? Uh -huh. Aren't we glad that we have gracious donors and Jesus makes sure that we have all the resources to be able to do that and help those people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. So let's shift gears. Because I know that you're getting super excited about this time of year. Oh, yeah. So what's your favorite time of year? Uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving. Right. And Christmas is about baby Jesus, isn't it? Uh-huh. Right? So, baby Jesus born? On Christmas. Right. And where was he born? Um, he was born on like, um, like a manger. Right. Which was kind of a stable. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Right? 
Did you think that was his mom and dad's choice, or was there just no room in the end? There's just not room in the end. Right. And do you think that's kind of why we have the policy that we do of we don't want to turn people away if they come to the shelter? Yeah, because that wouldn't be nice. It wouldn't be nice, and it probably hurt their feelings, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we want to make sure when somebody comes to the shelter that we we meet them and we can love on them and get them some hot food to eat and a warm bed to sleep in, maybe some clean clothes, mm, yeah. all that kind of stuff, right? Carlin, when we talk about Christmas at a homeless shelter like Camp Hope, what does Christmas look like at Camp Hope? Well, Christmas looks like, well, I remember this one time last year that Christmas had like this, our Camp Hope had like this giant Grinch like there with a giant Santa that was the same size. And there was also a puppy coming out of the, like this Christmas box. Mm -hmm. And it like the lid just came open like that. So we decorate for Christmas, mm -hmm. right? And, and do you think that we decorate so that the people that maybe aren't really excited about Christmas because they're not with their family or the kids that might be not, in, maybe don't have a home of their own, maybe it feels a little bit more like Christmas? Oh, yeah. What else do we do during Christmas? Well, we give them like nice food, like ham, mashed potatoes, rolls, and we also give them presents of like socks, shoes, hats, and like clothes. Right. So let's go back to the meal, okay? Okay. Because I know that you've helped with the meal. So last year, do you remember what you served? Um, yeah, I remember that I served the rolls. Right. And we had some special people kind of help serve, right? We had Alan from KMA TV. And then, do you remember who else kind of came down to help us serve? Um, uh, Patricia Byers and her husband. Right, Councilman Byers and her husband, right? Mm -hmm. um, was there anyone else? Um, Susie Carpino. Yep. And so our staff comes in and kind of volunteers that day to help mm -hmm. help with the meal and stuff. We had Holly Cousins from the mm -hmm. city council come down and serve, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we've had some of the sheriff's deputies, mm -hmm. some of the police officers come and help us, mm -hmm. right? And then you talked about presents, mm -hmm. right? So you're talking about the shoebox presents, right? Mm -hmm. So we've partnered with like uh, Holy Family Catholic Church, Sela mm -hmm. Covenant Church, and they put together in shoe boxes and they wrap them like presents so that everybody that stays at our, our shelter gets to open a present on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. Right? And inside, do you remember what's inside those? Um, socks, shoes, gloves, hats, clothes, and... Sometimes there's Bibles, mm -hmm. right? There's handwritten notes. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes there's movie tickets. And mm -hmm. sometimes there's like DVDs. Right, DVDs. If the person indicated a favorite movie or something like that. Yeah. But there's always a note. Do you remember what's always on that note? Um, it says, Jesus loves you. Oh Isn't yeah. that cool? Uh huh. Yeah. And so, after, but there's always something that happens that I know that you really like mm -hmm. that involves the kids staying at the Children's Center. Do you remember what we did last year? Uh-huh. I remember that all the kids at camp, Camp Hope, got a new bike, a new chain, and a new helmet. Right. So when Christmas morning came, those kids got to come outside and find a brand new bike, a brand new helmet with their name on it. And don't forget the chain. Uh, won't forget the chain. That's right. And so do you think those kids were pretty happy? Oh, yeah. And then you got to help deliver some toys as well, right? Because mm -hmm. some of our donors adopted a family, and they made sure that all the kids had toys, mm -hmm. right? And they got jackets, and some of the older kids got stuff for school and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, because we wanted them to celebrate Jesus' birth just as much as all the other kids. Mm -hmm. So every year after we do Christmas dinner, Last year, for the last two years, we've had people call in that maybe didn't have Christmas dinner. They, they couldn't afford a Christmas dinner. And so we've had our residents volunteer and some other volunteers like Councilman Byers, Councilman Cousins, 
um, Councilman Brown, the sheriff, some other people that will come in and we box up a meal that's got ham, mashed potatoes, pie, and we deliver it to that person's house. Do you think we should do that again this year? Oh, yes. Okay. Because you helped last year, right? Mm-hmm. And do you remember the, the lady with the two little kids that made those handwritten cards for us? Uh-huh. Those cards were really nice, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Were they pretty happy to get that dinner? Uh-huh. Yeah. I think we should do that again this year. What do you think? Oh, yes. I mean, you are the director of fun, mm -hmm. so you do have some say in this, okay? And Carlin, let's talk about 2023, right? So we got some new stuff happening in 2023. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's happening is we have the shipping container houses, mm -hmm. right? That uh, we're going to call the Compassion Cottages. Do you like that name? Uh-huh. Yeah. And so those were built by some guys here locally. Um, and they were in our friends with um, comprehensive health care, triumph treatment, um, and they're built for people that maybe are scared. They've had some bad stuff happen to them. We call it trauma, right? And they can't do congregate living where they live inside the dorms, mm -hmm. right? Have you got to see these cottages? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's inside the cottages? Two beds and um, like... There's heaters in there, right? Uh -huh. There's air conditioning. Uh -huh. um, and I know that you thought it was pretty cool. How soundproof are they? Like, really soundproof. Right. And is that important for somebody that has traumas, that it be kind of soundproof so they don't get startled and scared? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we insulated them all the way down to negative 70 degrees so they stay nice and warm uh -huh. or nice and cool in the summer. And are the beds soft? Uh-huh. Yeah. Really soft. Yeah. And then we painted them pretty colors on the inside, mm -hmm. right? So that our friends could come in off the street, not be scared, and have their own little lockable door so that they would feel safe. Do you think that's pretty cool? Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that we're probably going to do in 2023 is we're going to continue to help our friends in code enforcement and the police mm -hmm. department help clean up all these other camps for people that are kind of camping mm -hmm. along the river, around towns, stuff like that, where they kind of leave kind of a mess behind and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Have you gone out and helped with those? Uh-huh. Yeah. Is that fun? Uh-huh. Yeah. And usually we have like our friend John from County Codes is there, your buddy Sheriff Udell with his cowboy mm -hmm. hat and he gives you stickers and mm -hmm. challenge coins is there. Who uh -huh. else is there? Like Officer Haley. That's your buddy from from the Yakima Police Department, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep, she's there too, right? So I think we should probably continue that. What do you think? Uh -huh. I think the other thing we should continue to do is we should continue to expand our behavioral health services stuff, mm -hmm. right? So we have um, comprehensive health cares there now, mm -hmm. five days a week with an mm -hmm. office on site. Now we have our friends Triumph, so Leah and Vanessa are there mm -hmm. um, to help people get into like uh, treatment mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They're there five days a week now mm -hmm. too. We have OIC coming in with the veterans mm -hmm. so that we can help the people that are veterans get into housing faster and see what they're qualified mm -hmm. for. Gosh, we just have a lot of new friends and partners mm -hmm. that are working out of our campus. Mm -hmm. Do you think we should continue that? Yes. Do you think our people like the fact that they can just walk out of their dorm and go see their mental health provider by just walking a few feet? Mm -hmm. I think the other thing we should do we should build a dog park there at camp. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of our friends have dogs, don't they? Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be cool if there was a place for their dogs to be able to go and yeah. run and play and do all that kind of stuff? Yeah, there will be like a doggy like seesaw. Doggy seesaw, perfect. And doggy slide. But we've been pretty fortunate this year, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Right, we've, God's provided just what we needed at just the right moment to make sure that we could take care of all of our friends, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And we have really good donors that make sure that, that we have what we need to help take it. We have people that are praying for our people at camp and the people that work at camp and mm -hmm. our staff. We're pretty fortunate, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So what would you think, Carlin, is something that we should do maybe for Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Should we throw a Super Bowl party again this year? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, the residents really like that, don't they? Mm hmm Yeah. What, have we forgot to talk about anything? Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's that? Like a Christmas party. Oh, a Christmas party, absolutely. We're going to throw a Christmas party. Mm-hmm. Maybe have cookies. Uh-huh, like little cookies, like uh, white chocolate ones, mm -hmm. and like brown chocolate, like chocolate champ. Mm -hmm. And like also like rainbow cookie that we did like last year out of my house. Right. Right. And we should also do like this eggnog. You like making the eggnog for people too, right? Uh -huh. You know the other thing that we we're gonna do on Christmas as well? Uh -huh. We're gonna have people come in and sing hymns. Uh -huh. Do you know what hymns are? Uh-huh. Like one of your favorites, like Silent Night uh -huh. and some of those. So that the mm -hmm. people that want to participate can participate in that. And the other thing that we're gonna do is like this like talent thing. To really yep. So they can like show the talents that they have. Well, Carlin, you know what? We're out of time. Didn't that go by so fast? You did a, such a great job. So if you're watching this at home and and you feel compelled that you want to help, this year the needs are ever growing. We need everything from jackets and blankets to financial contributions to, yeah, if you think it's a challenge to feed your family, we're trying to feed 230 plus people on a daily basis. But particularly for Christmas, it's important to us that everybody gets a warm meal on Christmas Day. And so we're going to have an opportunity there on our website that you can sign up for that um, and so on. And so if you feel compelled to help us with this ministry, uh, please reach out through our Facebook page, our website, call. We'd love, to, we'd love to figure out how to partner with you and make sure that this Christmas really is a season of joy. And we're so grateful for all the donors that we do have. Um, and this is a great big mission field, uh, but we serve a great big God. So, Carlin? Okay. Back to you, Skip. Thank you, Mike and Carlin, for that update. And may God continue to bless and guide your efforts. Now, coming up next is Adrian Narug, Development Director of Life Choices, Yakima. Hello, my name is Adrian Narug, and I am the Development Director of Life Choices Clinic and Care Center right here in Yakima, Washington. Our mission is to provide compassionate care for men and women facing pregnancy decisions and education to encourage healthy relationships. We offer free medical and educational and support services, most importantly, in a non-judgmental environment. And we want to share the love of Jesus Christ in action and in words. Far too often in today's world, there is so much vitriol and hate thrown around the issue of unplanned pregnancy. And at Life Choices, we want women, men, and families to know that we are for them. We stand with them and walk with them throughout their pregnancy with love and compassion because we believe they are all beautifully and wonderfully made and called for a purpose. We are not just pro-pregnancy or pro-birth. We truly are pro-life and moreover, life abundantly. This is why we are a full frame clinic, including coordinated care, SDI testing and treatment. Uh, we even have the abortion pill reversal. We have ultrasound confirmation, prenatal vitamins, and that's just minimum. We offer mentorships for moms and dads, parenting classes, and this goes through the child's first birthday. We have an Earn While You Learn program where parents can shop at our baby boutique for, for their kiddos. We do a complete needs assessment and link them to services in the community and resource referrals. All services are free to those who come to our clinic. And in January, we kick off our baby bottle drive. We ask that you join us to answer the call for his purpose. You will find these bottles at your area churches. We do ask that you fill them with your change and money to help continue supporting the mission to build a culture that respects and supports life in Yakima. It's now more than ever in post row America that we, as believers and Christians, rise up and stand together. Not because of what we're against, but what we are 
for, and that is for the sanctity of life and love in motion by caring for and loving each other. And if you're not involved in a church or if your church is not involved with this program, please call me at Life Choices. It's 509-248-2273, and I will gladly help you get with bottles to fill or link you to anything else you can help volunteer with. We are also available to come speak at your church or your young adults or your youth group or even in an organization that just wants to get involved. We have a passion for life, and we will share that anywhere we are invited. Thank you, Adrian, for reminding our viewers on the important work you all do at Life Choices Yakima. You know that Christmas is a time to worship and celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. What a loving God we serve. From all of us at CBY, we wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley 
quality Christian programming for more than 40 years.